what I do try to do is I help women realize that you know if they, they've got something important to say I couldn't even register myself to get a phone or oh, a, wow. a a credit card a bank account yeah like really crude remarks as well like oh did you have an affair with the postman Oh my god. Or things like did you swap babies at the hospital? Yeah. You know, it's not like oh we missed you or something. It's more like oh my god, you've become so dark. You know, have you been you know, have you been playing outside like sports or something? And you're like, yeah, I missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Engage in Marketeer podcast. Now, first of all, before we begin, I would like to just address the elephant in the room. If you are listening to this, you are probably here and if you are watching, you will probably see from the much more amount of hair in the room <laughs> that I am not Darren. Um, so today, the Engaging Marketer is been taken over by myself, Emily. I work at Engage Web, and today I am joined by the lovely Myra Sheck of Myra Sheck Photography. Hi, Myra. Hi, Emily. Hi. That was such a fantastic introduction. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Brilliant. And how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm really well. How are you? Good. I'm good. And would you like to tell everyone just a little bit about what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. That's great. Um, so I am a personal brand photographer based in Cheshire, and I work with uh, women in business, especially in the service space industry. And I help them to feel more confident in front of the camera. And I use that. Um, I use I use brand photography as a tool to help them get visible in their marketing and really show up in the business and attract more clients. Brilliant. And let's go back to the beginning then. So how did you actually get into what you do now? Right. Okay. That's a really great, good question. <laughs> We're jumping right in. So um, I um, used to, I, I love traveling. I was living in Dubai and I um, had a great opportunity to travel all over Middle East, Far East. And I was like, I'm looking at these beautiful places. I better have a really good camera with me. <laughs> um, so that's the first time I picked up an SLR and I started learning all about photography. Um, and, you know, when you do that, you start taking a lot of courses and workshops and things like that. Um, and then it pretty much became an obsession. Um, and at that time, I um, gave birth to my daughter um, and she was the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I need to photograph every single second of her life. <laughs> um, and that's when I got into newborn and family photography. And I was in Doha at that time. And uh, a couple of years, years into that, uh, we moved to England um, when I came here. Um, I wanted to set up a business um, because my background is actually as a sustainability consultant. Oh, wow. <laughs> so very different, very different. Um, and I set up the business um, uh, designing and selling uh, cork fabric bags. Um, it's called, the business was called House of Ethics and the idea was everything was sourced ethically and the whole supply chain was sustainable. Um, but while I was working on the business, um, you know, I was, I was taking images and initially, you know, you have this like, sort of boring images against a white backdrop. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I was doing all of that and uh, what well, yeah the sales weren't great, I just say that. Uh, but I, then I was just like, right, I need to I need to fix this. I need to this is, this is a lot of money in this business. Um, and that's when I started learning more more and more about branding and yep. what brand photography could do to help you with your business. And um, and I put myself in the business more as well, you know, the, being the face of the brand. Um, and then I took off really well. Um, and I was like, hang on, so if you know, it took me it took me a while to understand that, and I'm sure there must be other small businesses that are struggling with yeah. that too. Um, so I then started offering brand photography as a service, um, and I pretty, pretty much grew from there. So that was a long answer. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> Spanning across three countries. <laughs> <laughs> You're a well travelled woman. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that you were a sustainability consultant before. I know that's I know. crazy it's... how did you get into that oh, <laughs> that's another story <laughs> so um uh another country <laughs> and so I um uh, I'm from Pakistan and while I was there there was a massive earthquake in Kashmir back in 2005 and I was studying social sciences at that time and um, was doing a lot more research. Uh, we, we were going there into these these areas, and 
everything was boiling down to the environmental impact of climate change on these countries, yeah. uh, on these areas. Um, and I was just like, I, I just wanted to learn more about that. Um, and then I um, did my master's in sustainability. I worked in London for a couple of years and then in Dubai and Doha. And um, yeah, the, it was just, it was very fascinating. Just loved it. Yeah. Do you miss it at all? Which part? The traveling, <laughs> the living life. Well, I suppose all of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I definitely miss it. Dubai was an amazing experience. Um, but there's a, there, there are two kinds of Dubai. There's one where you're single and you're working, <laughs> and then the ones where you're like married with kids. <laughs> so it, it, if you're asking which one I missed, <laughs> um, I do. I do miss that world of um, you know um, the working and the and you're just gonna. Kind of, worked hard, played hard. It, it was fantastic. Um, but when I got married and had kids, I couldn't really do that anymore. So that, well, that that's another reason I went into photography because it was yeah. more flexible and it was a bit more, um, you could do a shoot between the school run. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you yeah. find that juggling, raising a family and oh establishing your own business? Because you yeah. haven't actually been in this business that long, have you? No, no, I haven't. So this is my second year in business. Um, and... Um, you know, when people say, oh, you you know, leave a nine to five job to start something, um, you know, like flex hours or part time. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally working every hour God sends you. Like, so I've been up since four this morning. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> not because, you know, of anything, but because you get these ideas in the middle of the night and you're like, right, I need to put this down on paper. Yeah. And then before you know it, you've got like a new business plan for a completely <laughs> new service. <laughs> So it, it is hard, but um, it is really rewarding as well. And the the reason I do what I do is because I want to show my children, especially my daughter, um, that, you know, mommy is contributing something back. You know, you're working hard, being with all the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, and just just the, just the value of... Um, like a balanced life because coming from Pakistan it was most it was a very it's a very patriarchal society yeah. where mostly um, men work and a lot of women stay home and I wanted something different for my yeah. for my daughter as a role model so I like to think that I'm doing that definitely well I would definitely say so from my experience <laughs> oh, oh, thank you <laughs> it's mainly women that you do help in your photography isn't it yes that's right and a lot of these a lot of these women have been in the same situation as myself where they were in the corporate world um, and then they started families or, or more recently with COVID they realized that they wanted more of that balance and they didn't want to go back into full-time employment um, so they they left that and they're starting something new but starting a new business is really really hard um, you know you just don't know where to start you don't know um, you know sometimes you don't have the finance Finances, you don't know what kind of strategy to take and then this whole thing around branding and marketing and social media and the list goes on so that's um yeah yeah I love doing that <laughs> what would you say are the kind of biggest challenges that you help solve for the people that you work with yeah I think I think the biggest one um is definitely getting a lot of women um, to be more visible in the business and to feel more confident in front of the camera. Um, so, uh, for, honestly, sometimes like, it's, it's funny, but when I introduce myself, I was like, hi, I'm, you know, I'm Myra, I'm a brand photographer. And the first thing sometimes, uh, you know, women say, it's like, oh, I hate getting my photo taken. <laughs> that's like the first thing they say. <laughs> and oh, like, God. wow, that's great. <laughs> um, no, but I get it because it is really hard because a lot of, a lot of those w women, um, especially women, and I'm sure men too, but women, um, they feel a little bit more self-conscious they've yeah. gone through different milestones in life um but also there are uh, uh, quite a few mindset issues at play here um there's this um on a subconscious or a conscious level there's this whole idea of the fear of rejection a feeling that they're not good enough or um you know this is imposter syndrome that comes yeah. up and just 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 the, um, the idea of if you show up you're like showing off you know yeah and um, so women say, oh, I don't want to get a brand shoot because people, what would people think, you know? Um, and you, so it is, I can't say something like this and then they will would be like, yeah, right, sorted, you know, mindset shift done, I'm ready to get visible. <laughs> it's not like that. It yeah. takes months and years. Um, but what I do try to do is I help women realize that, you know, if they, they've got something important to say, 
a lot of the times they leave their full-time jobs is because they you know they're passionate about what they do yeah. they they want to change the world they want to help people so that idea the you know the purpose that they have they need to make that bigger than their fear of showing up on camera if they can do that if they can put themselves a tiny bit back and put their 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 why their purpose in the forefront that really helps them step up and say right you know what i need to get visible i need to get my message across to the world that's lovely and that's before you've even put them in front of a camera so you know <laughs> so what actually does go on in a brand shoot right yeah that's that's a really really good question um so it depends on the type of brand shoot you're doing but there's a lot of work that goes before anybody even sees me with a camera in my hand you know um and that's what makes brand photographers quite different from wedding photographers or family photographers or any other kind of photographer is because we work a lot on understanding what the what the person's brand is all about you know what makes them different what makes them stand up from the crowd what makes them unique what's the brand's personality and you need to bring that into the images yeah. so the process starts with working one on one with clients and just getting that strategy on paper and understanding who are they doing this for who are their clients you know um and who they want to help and the pain points and then based on you know what their brand stands for who they're helping we come up with sort of these brand themes so for example um you know if it's a coach that i'm working with and she wants to say well look i want to come across as friendly and approachable so then one of the themes we would look at is you know showing her behind the scenes and showing what it's really like to work with her you know showing how she um you know what what her process of consultation is where she works you know what kind of people she works with so all of those behind the scenes would be a big theme in the shoot um there could be another theme like um for example i i love doing the theme around celebration you know so you know the you know celebrating those big wins and small yeah. wins in businesses so the you know in the shoot we could have like a this is the best part we could have like prosecco there and we could have like a little party going Sounds on great. confetti cake i know right <laughs> um so all those themes need to come in because images can be such a powerful way to um you know visually translate all those brand messages and the brand content into you know a story into a brand story and bring that forward uh, into your marketing into your messaging so that's incredible i think a lot of people who don't know about this thing might just think oh it's just getting some pictures of myself yeah. taken but it's actually yeah. so much more than that so oh, much goes on behind 100%. the scenes 100% and then you know it's it's looking at when when i work with clients they're like oh my god that's a lot of work but it's it's just getting it right so like your outfits you know what you're wearing and the props that you're bringing and the location that you're choosing you know and if you have other people in the shoot or not you know so some people are like right can i have a brand shoot next week and you're like oh maybe <laughs> not <laughs> you really need to think this through yeah. and plan things out so you're right there's a lot that goes into it yeah yeah and you mentioned about celebrating your clients biggest wins in business what would you say are your biggest wins i think the biggest win for me um <laughs> it may not sound like a like a win win but just getting over the first year in business yes you know and saying right <laughs> I, i i did it you know i work with so many people and I, i i achieve something i set a target and i achieve that i think that would that would be the biggest one because a lot of businesses um unfortunately they fail in the first year or the second year yeah. of business because it's really hard out there with with the way the economy is and with the way how every industry is so saturated you know definitely um, right <laughs> so you think right if i can make it that one year then you feel a little bit more you know comfortable and you feel a bit more reassured and you know you're like yes i got this i won't say it was like one particular moment but i would say it was that sort of achieving that oh I did it so <laughs> yes exactly yeah 100% yeah and what would you say has been your greatest challenge in that first year i suppose the the first time i went to a networking meeting and um it was you know i i didn't come from a business background i didn't know anybody i didn't have any network i didn't have any followers i didn't have any connections nothing and it was walking into that networking meeting and stepping up and uh, if you know, and I, again I get another layer to that is that i felt that i was um the only 
women there of color yeah. and um you know I, I had an accent and I just looked different from everybody and the, at the back of my mind it was just saying like are people going to take me seriously or will they will they be more hung up on the way I look or the way I talk or something and yes I do recognize that a lot of this might have been in my head you know a lot of people are you know don't even think like that you yeah. know, it's it's something they don't consider but um you know growing up in a different country and where um if you know everybody's the same so there's no diversity and yeah. there's no um you know the, 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 you are the same every everyone is from the same um, religion race ethnicity so then to come and live in another country where you're different it does throw you off a little bit yeah. um and you you you're just always sometimes doubting yourself um so yeah i think that would be one of my biggest challenges is to get over my own limiting beliefs and not stand in my own way yeah, yeah yeah and i think what you said about that it is in your head you know i think that's not to say that there isn't some of that in reality but i think looking at yeah. you and yeah. the life you've lived so far <laughs> all of the countries and how far you've come because you haven't actually been in england for that long have no, you no. it's and to yeah. set up a business quite yeah. early on moving to a whole new country is just incredible thank you it's crazy and thank was it you here around this area that you did move straight to or did you move yeah to? yes it was it was around this area um so my husband um he's a surgeon at the Countess of Chester so he got the job first and then um we tagged along and the way the um the system works is that um so he was sponsored by the hospital um and he sponsored me then oh okay so i didn't even exactly have a visa in that sense yeah. like so my visa my, like, yes i got the visa but i was de- i was his dependent yeah um and that's something i really struggled with in, initially because um when when we first got married we were living in doha and it was the same situation where i didn't even have um like uh, i couldn't even register myself to get a phone or oh, a, wow. a, a credit card, a bank account, yeah. or there was like no, like, I there was no address for me, no postcode. Um, so like, I was literally invisible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. As as um as an expat woman living in another country, yeah. um, you have a whole different set of challenges, you know. Um, so when I came here, um, <laughs> you know, it was trying to get used to the idea that you know you're kind of not the same as everybody else um so I think that was also a bit of a challenge for me initially again most of these issues have been mindset issues you know they they, um they are to do with our own beliefs um and just just following on from that earlier question as well um it's um so I found it really hard to step in front of the camera myself because I realized uh, from early on um, and like I was explaining in the first business that I started if you are not visible in your brand if you are not the face of your brand it's um, it's really hard to build a connection with your audience with your clients you know um, and I realized that I keep going on and on, on about it but I need to walk the talk yeah I need to step in front of the people camera people buy so. from people don't exactly they? <laughs> exactly so I was I was like so when I had to get my own brand shoot done and I had to put myself out there and to do go live for the first time or to be a guest speaker networking event in any form and shape when you have to step up and be visible that was really really hard for me um and and one reason was that I felt different but also another reason was that um I didn't have a lot of confidence and um, um, the idea that, you know, women who are beautiful and successful, uh, you know, they are, they're more fair skinned, you know. So growing up when I was about about 14, 15, 16, around that time, um, you know, that's the time when you are really trying to figure out what the world is all <laughs> <Yeah>. about, <laughs> you know, in your teenage years, it doesn't help. 
And that's when um, in, in my family um, and, and everywhere, you know, around me in society, um, the expectation was that, you know, women who are fairer skinned, they would do better. So um, I remember the first time I saw this box, you know, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a white box and it was called um, Fair and Lovely. And it's a bleaching cream that people use. So on one side of the box, there's like this woman and she's looking really miserable and you know, dejected. And on the other side, it's the same woman, but she looks fairer and happier and you're just, just full of bliss. And this bleaching cream and, oh God, I like it's a huge list of toxins and acids. And, and this chemicals. is for your skin. This is for your skin and you put it all over you. Um, um, so, th so that's, that's sort of the cream that, you know, um, you used to, to, to be lighter and more fairer. And the idea um, was that, um, you know, girls um, from respectable families, they don't work in, you know, outside. They don't go outside. They don't work outside. They stay home so that they don't get a tan and then they look nice and pretty and pale. And then that's how they get the marriage proposals in. And that's how their boys um, boys prefer that because it's a whole matchmaking um, scene and arranged marriages. And then you, they were looking for a fairer, whiter girl. So that was the idea. So that really threw me off. That threw me, because I was the darkest one in my family. Yeah. I, uh, you know, had to use these creams all the time. And was, so your parents actually made you use these creams? Yeah, so these creams were um, given to me and all my friends used it and everybody around me, my cousins, everybody. And um, the, in, you know, you, you had to use it like in the morning and in the evening, like like a moisturizing cream. <laughs> you know, you bleached yourself, and um, and it wasn't just this cream. There was another cream called Julen, and it was to bleach the hair on your body as well. So it wasn't just <laughs> the skin wasn't enough. You had, you know, because you had facial hair or your yeah. body hair, you had to bleach that oh, as wow. well. Yeah. Wow, and this was just a common. A occurrence very common thing it's a very 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 common thing it's called and it's huge in countries like india and the far east yeah. and south asia and initially it was called fair and lovely but now it's called glow and lovely they're trying to be politically oh. correct because you can't say fair um and so that's for fair so fair and lovely was for women and fair and handsome was for men Oh, so it was men were also see are also seen yes. the fairer skin. Yes, not as much as women. Yeah, um, the it was it, there was a huge market for women to use yeah. it, but the but this was used by men as well, and they would use Bollywood actors as the sort of the influencers yeah. then to you know help promote that product. So yeah, that's <laughs> honestly it's it's baffling. I mean, I'm yeah. in such a privileged privileged position that. I didn't really realize how prevalent this was. Yeah. You, of course, hear about these things, yeah. but you just don't realize that this is such a widespread yeah. thing and that people yeah. would do it. Because, you know, yeah. in the UK, you had yeah. back, yeah. you know, in the, I yeah. say, olden times, <laughs> shall we <laughs> say, it times. was the same here where yeah. people, the whiter you were, yeah. the yeah. kind of richer you were perceived to be because you didn't have to be out in the fields 100%. working. But I suppose in the yeah. UK now, it's kind of shifted and gone the yeah. other way where people yeah. are wanting to be yeah. tanned and yeah. the fake tan market for example you know, I've mind. got some on today <laughs> yeah. but you know it's yeah. people here are yeah. wanting to be more tanned but people yeah. in you know Pakistan yeah. and countries around that area yeah. are wanting to be fairer yeah. still it's um it comes back it's from the you're absolutely right like back in back in the times like the Victorian periods or whenever it was um so in these countries this is kind of a um a, a byproduct of colonial, colonial legacy doesn't... You know, so um, the white man was considered to be superior. Yeah. And so if you, you know, just by association, if you were fairer, then that was the point. Like, yeah, you would fit in and you would have privilege there. And, you know, there's a funny thing is that all this time I was trying to understand this a bit more. And I finally came across this term which explains it. It's called internalized racism, which basically means that you and you when you're brought up you know you are you also perceive yourself to be inferior so it's not other people think you're inferior and as that that would be yeah. racism but that you yourself think you're inferior 
and that's internalized racism. And creams like these, these bleaching creams, are kind of like, you know, these are the products that people used, that's the, you know, which manifested in internalized racism. Yeah. So even, even now, like, um, it's so prevalent in families. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, so my daughter, um, she, um, uh, she, when she was born, she was much more fairer skinned than I was. Yeah. And the first thing that a lot of people in my family said was, oh my God, look at you, look at her. There's such a huge difference. Oh, really? There were people who even said, like, there was such silly comments like, um, like really crude remarks as well, like, oh, did you have an affair with a postman? Oh my God. <laughs> or things like, did you swap babies at the hospital? Yeah. And there were these things that people said to me as well, growing up, um, when, um, you know, I was the darker one in my family, and then, you know, like, people would tease me, and they would say, oh, well, you swapped to the hospital, and I would, and as a young, young child, I was really, really upset about that, and then I would point out there was this mole on my left leg, and I was like, no, look, dad has the same mole, that means I wasn't swapped, I am one of you, you know, and that's really sad, that isn't is, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, where you're, you're telling people, no, I've got evidence to say I'm yeah, part that of you're you. made to feel that way, yeah. and how have you over the years been able to kind of unpack some of that internalized feelings and would you yeah. say that your perspective has changed yeah. since kind of moving out of that country yeah i think i think um there's no i can say yes i have and no i haven't it's it's, it's really um it's really tricky because there's some sometimes i get i it's easier for me to accept it and then there's some days where there'll be a comment that would trigger that back, you know. So, for example, um, if my son oh, has his hand in my hand, you know, and, um, you know, like somebody would say, um, oh, look how how dark your hands are or something like that. And then you'd be like, oh, my God, I, I'm thinking I'm sharing a lovely moment with my mm. son that, you know. But then comments like that, that would trigger it. Yeah. Um, and I, like even when I go back home, sometimes you know it's not like oh we missed you or something. It's more like oh my god you become so dark. You know have you been you know have you been playing outside like sports or something? And you're like yeah I missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> so the so it's it's really hard you know, um, it it's constantly with you. And that's yeah. the thing with my clients as well that you know sometimes they've been body shamed for so many years since they were children or young adults that it stays with them even yeah. now that you know just the thought of coming in front of the camera triggers that you know and, and and it makes them think right what will people say will they judge me and it's the same with me as well you know so yeah i think as a woman as well it's just I mean, it's not to say that men don't have these struggles yeah. with body image at all, but I think the pressure as women it is so much, 100%. so much more because you are scrutinised yeah. for your appearance day in, day 100%. out. Hundred percent. I mean, we're told how to walk, how to talk, how to you know dress up, what to eat constantly. Yeah. You know, in media, in different forms. You know, like we meet people, and it's just constantly you know repeated over and over again and that's that's a promise that I wanted to make to my daughter when she was born that you know I wanted to do things differently I wanted yeah. to show her that she could be comfortable in her skin all the time because she'll come to me and you know she'll say things like oh I've got lots of hair on my legs you know um and I remember when I was young at her age and um, she's gonna turn nine in a couple of months and I remember when I was at her age um, I was bullied in school because I had a lot of body hair, yeah. you know, and so I, I want to show her that it's, it's, you know, we all have it, it's natural, yeah, it is. you know, and you're going to be fine, and so I want her to feel really comfortable in her skin, so. Yeah, that's so inspiring. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. But it's um it's something it's something that you know we need to constantly work at. I feel, yeah. um, and it goes back to the idea that people will keep saying things to us. You know that will never stop. You can't change people. You can't change people's prejudices, and you can't change them. You know, and it should it shouldn't be your business either. You know, you focus on your own yeah. business. Yeah. And you let them say whatever they want to. Um, and I keep going back to the quote for, like, you know, Mel Robbins' quote where she says, let them. 
you know, just let them, you know, you, you stay in your own lane and you focus on what you need to do and let them say whatever they want to. I think there's a saying, isn't there? It's something like you can't um, kind of change how people will act towards you, but you can change how you react towards them. Yes. That's what you can actually control. Yes, 100%. Oh, I love that one. I love that. That's absolutely true. And and the reaction, if you can make it positive, yeah. and then, you know, just step in front of that camera or be more visible or, you know, speak up or, you know, go for that goal that you've been wanting to do for a while, you know, that's the way to show them. Yeah, and it's yeah. taking back your power. It's yeah. putting you in that position yeah. of power and, yeah, 100%. just leaving them in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. And, you know, it's like, um, it's um, <clears throat> it's something I talk about a lot with my clients as well and 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 just generally with, with women that I meet um, constantly is that it's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, because when you're vulnerable it shows that you know you are human and then that's the way people will connect with you yeah. so um two weeks ago i shared this story for the first time ever i hadn't really spoken about this before excuse me and there was an event called speakeasy in liverpool and um it was a, you know you had to put in like an application and then you know a lot of people put it in and then they would decide which story they wanted to, um, which story would inspire people. And they picked the story. And since that day, I haven't stopped talking about it because so many people have got in touch with me. They've messaged me, they emailed me, they met me in person and they said, your story really inspired us. Yeah. Because I was vulnerable and I was sharing that. And that made them feel like, oh, you know what? I, I can be vulnerable with this person. I can let them in as well. Yeah. And everybody's got a story as well. You know, every single person has <laughs> one, you know. And the more we talk about our experiences and the more we bring that forward, the more connected we will feel with our with the people that we work yeah. with or we want to attract into our world. Yeah. yeah, and it's great. And obviously, it's... Yeah, thank you so much for sharing this story, oh, first of all, as well, because like you say, you this isn't something you have shared up until recently. Yeah, but I think, you know... Obviously, I'm so sorry that you've had to go through that and feel that way because no one should have to feel uncomfortable in their own skin. And, you know, but it does add, yeah. it adds that extra yeah. layer. It makes, yeah. it's like a clicking yeah. moment. Wow, that's why yeah. she does what she does. And that's yeah. why she has so much yeah. passion and drive because yes. you're just, yeah, imparting positivity oh, into the world. And you wouldn't, thanks, so you know, Where whenever... <laughs> You know, whenever yeah. I see you, you're yeah. always smiling, oh, you're always so happy and you, you really are such a ray of sunshine. Oh, and it's awesome. not just in the brand photography as well, because you do workshops as well, don't you? Which yes. I have had the honour of attending. Yes. Oh, honour's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, th and that was the, the reason behind the workshops was as well, um, r running, running them for business owners so that, you know, nothing should stop them in being visible and they already have the most powerful tool in their hands or pockets or wherever the, the phones and the cameras in these phones are amazing so that's why i want to teach people where you know create that content step in front of any lens you know whether it's for images whether it's for videos whatever it is speak your truth bring that message forward and you know i i wanted to show people that you can do it yourself you don't need like a fancy camera, you don't yeah. need to spend thousands, you know, on anything like that. You don't need to get a brand photographer if you don't want to. Just just step up and be more visible. And and the more we do that, the more um, people will become more aware of issues like that. You know, um, when I spoke to you about this and I spoke to other people about it, I was surprised that you were so surprised, you know, yeah. that... I didn't, and I was talking to some friends as well, and, and I was like, I don't understand, because after after that event, Speakeasy, um, I was a little bit overwhelmed by the response because I didn't expect that people would be so moved by it. And she was like, yeah, but why not? Because we hadn't heard of this issue. We didn't know that something like this yeah. existed, you know? Um, and to me, I've grown up with this. It's, yeah. it's, it's you know, it's the norm. normalized, yeah. it, but it shouldn't be normalized, no. you know? No. It, it should come forward. And, and so I keep thinking, 
back when I was that little girl and I was bullied in school for having hair on my body and then later when I had to use these bleaching creams what I'm doing right now I am you know thinking about the other little girls right now in Pakistan in different countries of the world in this country you know I'm thinking about them and how they feel yeah. you know if they are different for whatever whichever way whether it's the color of your skin whether the shape of your body whatever it is if they can know that you know these issues they shouldn't stop you from being your best self from yeah. achieving your goals and the other people who can help you along the way then that's something that I I I feel like I've done my bit I love that that's great. Thank you so much, Myra, for that. Honestly, I think it is. It's just so moving. And it is. A, it's. We are so privileged in that we haven't had to experience that or know that story. And I think it just makes it all the more moving that you are opening people's eyes to this and shedding a light on such an important message because no one should have to feel that way. 100%. And I, and I think that, you know, with um, so many. Um, uh, immigrants coming to the country now and so much happening in politics and you know yes there is racism in this country as well as is it's in everywhere i feel like the more we talk about these issues the more understanding they will be the more tolerance they will be yeah. because we are people at the end of the day all these borders and all these societies these are these are social and constructed culturally constructed yeah. norms they, they don't really exist people are the people everywhere we are the same everywhere yeah. aren't we so we are and i think it's all just stems back to colonialism and things that have yeah. happened in the past and i think yeah. we do i think yeah. the world would be a much better place yeah. if we could all just yeah, yeah. accept one another and yeah. you know raise each other up really and take back that power and definitely wow and I love that <laughs> I feel like Emily needs a moment as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a very, it's a very moving and difficult topic, but I think it is one yeah. that definitely needs to be more, yeah, more spoken yeah. about. Hundred percent. Because a part of all of this is like I'm. So my kids, um, you know, when they go to school, um, so we 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 live in Elsmere Port. It's a lovely area, um, but there are very few people from the same background as us. Um, so when my kids go to school. I just wanted for them to feel very normal, like they yeah. like everybody. And um, sometimes it's hard because sometimes they'll come back from school and, um, um, you know, my, my son said to me the other day, I look weird. And I was like, what do you mean you look weird? And he's like, my hair is weird. I want yellow hair and my skin is orange. I don't like my skin. It's weird. It's Everything's weird about me, mommy. Um, and a part of me was just like, you know, and I just, I just, um, you know, want him to feel just, yeah, just to be happy. Yeah. And to be comfortable in who he is. And and to think it's not weird, but it's beautiful. You know, being different yeah. is a good thing, isn't it? It is, you know? it is. And there are so many people out there who are putting on the fake tan or they're going on sunbeds <laughs> to darken their skin or are really hoping yeah. that they would yeah. have, yeah. you know, thicker, lovelier yeah. hair and, you know, all of these things. Is Everyone yeah. Yeah. has those insecurities, don't yeah. they? But it must be so much harder it's feeling just, that way. It's just those things, you know, and it, it's interesting you said about the hair as well because, um, and you'll start noticing this as well now, um, textured hair or afro hair or different hair is not considered to be as beautiful as a straight you know blonde shiny mm -hmm. hair like that why who says yeah. that you know who made that up you know and we've got like hair straighteners and so many billion billion dollar industries you know fixing our hair fixing our skin fixing like you know our face you know yeah but according to who you know these 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 standards of beauty who made them you know yeah so it's, it's so the, that's why i feel like the more women of color can come forward especially in media especially in the businesses especially in, you know in 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 the networking circles wherever they can come forward we will normalize it and it doesn't need to be something that's different yeah. you know it will become part and parcel of everyday life 
Because yeah, I think in business in general, it is more of a male dominated yeah. historically. And I yeah. think now female owned businesses are yeah. on the rise, but then yeah. female businesses owned by people of colour, it's yeah. an even smaller minority again. So I yeah. think what you're doing in yeah. being the face of this brand and yeah. actually stepping out and getting out into the community is yeah. absolutely just oh, yeah, the you, way really. to go and so inspiring. Oh, and hopefully you. you will inspire other people who may be are considering taking that plunge into business but they don't yes. feel like they have that confidence what yes. what would just you say to someone who maybe was feeling like that yeah that's that's a really really good point because i see a lot of people um from the asian community british indians british pakistanis british bengalis um a lot of them i'm not going to say everybody but a lot of them um have the traditional, you know, they, they follow sort of the, in the traditional pattern of work, you know, they'll go into a, a corporate job or, yeah. um, uh, you know, in, in, in a particular industry. And there are very few people who are start, who are starting startups or starting businesses, especially women. And I, and I think I, what I would say is, is like just really to believe in themselves because I know that sounds really cliche. I thought when I said it, I was like, wow, that's cliche. <laughs> But there's no other way of saying it because yeah. unless you believe in yourself, you know, um, nobody else will believe in you. Yeah. You know, especially the people closest to you because they will say things to you. They will say things to bring you down. Um, and sometimes it's said in, you know, in the best intentions and sometimes it's not. But other people will say stuff. What you got to do is put those blinkers on, you know, just focus on what you need to do, what your vision is, and really believe in yourself. So, you know, I, I remember something um, someone used to say to me, that, that was between men and women, and they, they used to say, you know, women have to work sometimes five times as hard as men to get to the same level. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps it's true, but well, I think it is true. But <laughs> I, I like to use that with um, women who are starting their, um, you know, their careers as jobs. Uh, I want to say to them, you might have to work a little bit harder. You might have to prove yourself a little bit more. Um, that's the reality, you know, because, you know, there will be people who will judge you. There will be people yeah. who, you know, might not want to work with you, not because they are racist or not because in any way they are negative anywhere or maybe just because they don't understand you or they don't feel comfortable around you. They've never maybe worked with somebody like that before. There could be any different reasons. So you got to put yourself more out there and show them that, you know, you can build that connection with them. So I would say really believe in your message, really believe in the vision that you have and then go take action. You know, just, just go for it. Like, just don't look back. Just go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so to circle it back to photography, <laughs> I feel like we've, we've covered I mean, a lot. We've covered a lot in this episode. We did, we did. On the, on the topic of that and you know, instilling confidence in people. And yeah. when it comes to photography, how do you do that? How do you help people feel that empowerment and feel that confidence if they're, yeah. if maybe they haven't felt comfortable in front of a camera before? Yeah, that, that's a really, really good question. There are a couple of ways I do that. One um, is that, you know, I build a relationship with them. So, you know, when they come, it's not the first time they've actually seen me. We, we built that connection. We built a friendship. I've become friends with my clients. So by the time we actually are on shoot, you know, we're friends. I know their kids' names. I know their dogs' names, <laughs> you know. Like, we build that relationship. So that's one way because, you know, unless you have that, it's still really awkward being in front of the camera. I mean, yeah. um, you know, when we were starting out right now, we were just like, oh, there's a camera, there's lights, you know, like what's <laughs> happening? No, it's, it's, we're not, we don't feel like it's a natural state. Um, so that's one way. The other is that um, I also help them with, you know, different types of posing as well, with their body language, um, making them feel really relaxed. Um, I also help them with um, the clothes that we wear. Because if we look comfortable, we were wearing something comfortable and we're looking good, we feel good in the inside yeah. as well, you know. So um, sometimes women will try like a new hot red lipstick or something <laughs> or they'll get their hair cut, bangs, you know, before she yeah. like, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't try something risky right now. Just do something that you're really comfortable yeah. with. So I, like, I give tips like that, you know, like trying to help them decide what... Um, you know what type of clothes will fit their shape um how to relax themselves on the shoot um and just just constantly reinforcing that you know 
you know, you, they've got it, you know, they're looking amazing, they're, you know, you know, just, just helping them with the, like a lot of positive words. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually working on a, um, a free training um, where I have a free training on how to feel and look more confident on camera. Oh, okay. So I can share that, you can put that in your um, notes. Or yeah, that's notes. great. Um, yeah. So will that be an online? Yes, it's, it's an online uh, training um, and they'll get my, like my biggest by, you know, chunks of like tips you know yeah. on body language on styling on talking on camera all sorts of tips so that should really help them as oh, well that sounds great would we be able to have a sneak peek maybe could you give us uh, one of your top tips yeah <laughs> let's see there's so many um well it depends on if you are getting a shoot or if you are filming yourself um so i think for uh, one of my uh, my tips is always um smile okay it's, i know it sounds really really simple but when people step in front of the camera um they're very nervous yeah. and so i always tell them just smile and at first it feels a really big thing to do you're like what's there to smile about yeah. you know like, i don't want to smile you know just can we just hurry up and get it over with um but when you smile you relax your muscles you relax yourself you know you get into the calm state yeah. as well and when you're smiling when you're speaking you feel a bit more confident, you feel a bit more engaging, you feel more, you know, positive. So it works with both images as well as video as well. So yeah. I think, yeah, that's great. So yeah. would you have any tips on, say, smiling? Because I know for me personally, sometimes yeah. if I am feeling a bit uncomfortable, a yeah. bit awkward, and yeah. people are like, smile, and then they take a picture and I look at it and I yeah. think, wow, that's a really forced <laughs> smile. I know I was not enjoying that at all. Yeah, Do you have right. any tips for that, for feeling yeah. more relaxed and yeah. feeling kind of more comfortable? <laughs> I love it. That was everybody, right? There was a cheese. That's yeah, the last just like thing grimace. To say. <laughs> That's the last thing to say. Exactly. So the couple of things I do is I always, um, um, like it goes back to building that relationship with the photographer, right? But I always like crack these silly jokes and at first people like kind of oblige and they laugh <laughs> and then I, and then, and I, or even I tell them like, come on, give me a smile, give me a laugh or something and they'll fake laugh it. Yeah. But I wait for the laugh after the fake laugh because then it becomes a genuine oh, laugh okay yeah <laughs> you know? I can see. yeah so at first you can tell the smile or the laugh doesn't reach their eyes yeah that's that's a, a giveaway sign you know? yeah um but as soon as they realize like how silly the situation <laughs> is oh it's laughing is contagious you know yeah. when you see somebody I'm laughing laughing you know either you're laughing at them or with them or something you start <laughs> laughing as well right um and it is human nature. So when you do that, you know, when you are smiling, the when someone says to you, smile, and again, it depends on the context as well. But when I'm shooting my clients and sometimes they're really uncomfortable, I actually tell them not to look in the camera oh, okay. and smile away from the camera. Yeah. Or I give them something to do with their hands or something, some action that they're doing. So maybe they're walking and looking in the camera and then they feel a bit more relaxed, comfortable. The smile starts coming more naturally. So next time somebody says smile to you, um, you know, you don't have to look in the camera. Yeah. You know, you can look somewhere else as well. Like you're busy, you're working, but you know, you're, you're still part of the image then yeah, yeah. okay yeah. i will try it out i will report yeah. back yeah <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that. that would be fantastic yeah <laughs> so you mentioned about this online um offering that you're going to be producing so what are your other plans do you have any other plans for the future Ooh. <laughs> you know when i woke up at three in the morning that was a plan <laughs> That's right. So I've got um, actually a couple of things in the pipeline right now. Um, I am creating something called the content community. So it's something quite different where, you know, you have your regular photography subscription services where you get together and you do a brand shoot every month. Mm -hmm. This one is a bit different in the sense that it's, it's a quarterly content shoot. So the images and videos but you also get coaching from me on how to use those videos oh, okay. and images, you know? So whether it's to help them plan their content or whether how to create reels out of them, how to, um, you know, um, design a lead magnet out of them on Canva, things like that. I'm going to help people actually use those images yeah. because my biggest frustration is when you do a shoot 
and then people don't know how to use those yeah. images. Oh, it kills me. It absolutely kills me. And then the third part of this um, this community is the community element. So one thing a lot of my clients and other people say as well, it's really hard being consistent, you know. And I, I think that in order to be consistent, you need to have a bit of accountability. Yeah. So that community support can give you that, you know, with some regular check-ins, things like that, um, where, where you, you know that other people are on the same boat as you. So I'm creating this content community and it launches in September. So I'm very excited to do that. Yeah. Ooh, and how have you found putting that together? You know what? It's... um. It's been a bit of a challenge as well because um, we photographers are facing a lot of um, competition from different forms, you know, from stock images, from stock videos, from AI generated images mm. and videos, um, from our own smartphones, you know. Um, so, and it is a very saturated market, but I feel like people want to work with me because they feel comfortable around me um so so people who have signed up to the content community are doing it because they they believe in in me you know yeah. um, and I want to teach people all the things that I've learned in the last couple of years of running a business and be more visible I want to teach that to to them and, and, and help them build their business as well yeah that's great and you mentioned about stock imagery there. Yeah. And so I suppose, what would you say to someone who is perhaps thinking, oh, I'll just use some stock imagery, you know, or in my yeah. marketing on my website, for example. Yeah. What what would you say to them would be the benefits of actually getting yeah. professional photography yeah. taken? Well, first of all, I would never say no, don't use stock images because stock images do have their place in, in the whole content plan, you know, in your marketing and your business, um, you know. But at the same time, you know, you still need images of yourself, you know, so it's got to be a mix. Um, and for someone starting out, you know, as a startup, I know that budget's tied and there are so many other things that you can use your money m- money for, for website, for social media, etc. so many things. But your web designer, your social media person, your brand designer, all of them, when they work with original content, of you as a face of your brand, the website looks so much yeah. better. Yeah, I right? completely You've agree. You've seen that we as see well. That. Yeah. <laughs> right? It has a completely different feel to it. It has a different quality of professionalism about it. And it also builds a connection with the audience. So what I, I um, what I tell my uh, people who are interested in that, I have mini shoots as well, which are offered to them. Yeah. And so they don't have a big budget, but they still want to get started. They can come to my mini shoot day they get a couple of images um, and then they can get started with that and combine that with stock images yeah. and build your content library so you're good to go then. Yeah. And then when you are making more money, when you have that luxury, then come back for a full brand shoot. That's yeah. what I say. That's great. So you would say then, I suppose, if someone was just setting up a business that they should at least get some something early something. on so they've got those assets to 100%. Use. Because if they are doing all that hard work and then, you know, they've got their website or they've got their, you know, social media page and somebody goes and there's a bathroom selfie on the profile <laughs> image, <laughs> you know, yeah. or the selfie from the races or something, you know. Um, I've seen people use their wedding, you know, oh, photos um. as well, <laughs> you know. So imagine what impression you're creating. Yeah. Because the first impression is a really, really important impression, Absolutely. isn't it? You've got like, what? You know, I know a very wise man who once said to me, it takes three seconds for people to form an impression, you know. <laughs> Maybe we were seven. So um, that's how long it takes. So when somebody comes to your website, your page, and they see that immediately, they're going to be like, oh, they're not really serious about the business, are they? You know, they're not really taking it professionally. Um, so if you can just, if you can just do one thing, have that really high quality professional headshot or profile image uh, up there uh, on your cover photo, on your website and your about me page just get that just that get that <laughs> foot in the door yeah you know just start somewhere i i would definitely recommend that to a small business starting out yeah that's great and anyone who is listening to this video who wants to work with you what would be the best way to get in touch oh brilliant um i'm everywhere as myra sheikh um so it's m-a-i-r-a sheikh s-h-e-i-k-h 
everywhere. <laughs> like you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, my website is myrashik.com. Um, and um, yes, and like I said, if they come to the website or any of these platforms um, and they want to work with me, they can um, drop me a message and we can book in a call. Or if they want to get that free training on how to be more confident on camera, they can do that and they can be part of my mailing list. So they'll get a lot of useful information throughout the process as well. Um, because I talk a lot about branding and content creation and social media marketing as well um, because I think I think you, I'm kind of the person who doesn't just take an image and walks away yeah I want to make sure people are using it so I give lots of like advice and help on how to use those images and how to build their marketing and their visibility so they'll never get rid of me <laughs> <laughs> in the best possible in way the best possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great Myra oh, um, thank you so much oh, for so being welcome. here and speaking with me today thank it's you been for an absolute me. pleasure to speak it. with you thank you <laughs> thank you and thank, thank you. you to everyone for listening today as well <laughs>